Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing business, business. But are we signing an army of Colombian Wondercats? Not really. We instead spent the end of December renewing some contracts. The goal of this transfer window was to make this team slightly more local and allow younger players first team football, aka we're letting some people go. For some, like Zorvan or Malik, it will be the contract signing club. Oh wait, Malik retires. For likes of Savedra, a loan to Azerbaijan with an optional fee. And these were the only moves out of the club in this window. So let's go with players in. Big news, we finally used the Benfica League to an advantage. We loaned a defensive midfielder Anton Fisun and Diogo Nascimento. These two loanies are the only signings. And I said something about getting more local players into the team. Well, all I can say is... We started the second round of games against rock bottom Slovan Liberec and we made slight tactical changes. Marek Fela has a trait of coming deep to get the ball and preferred to receive a ball into his feet, so we made him a false nine. Jan Robert stayed as an inside forward but with an attacking duty, while Nemanja Ilic got a support one. So you're wondering what happened? We considered in the 23rd minute and guess what? I joined all of these changes. And the players wanted to prove you don't change stuff that works. Yalcin Kayan equalized from a corner and literally a minute later, John Lesa from Liberec totally did not take control of the ball, allowing Marek Fiala to grab a winner. This greatly explains why their club is dead last. And that win allowed us to jump into 5th place. We joined the European battle for the first time ever. And we had no intention of stopping. Just like the Victoria Pils and Defenders, who bizarrely decided not to bother about Jonathan Robert casually walking into their net. And if you thought they were going to listen to this wake-up call, you'd be wrong, because we proceeded to launch two long shots, both greatly saved by Jedlicka. We finally posed a threat in the 17th minute, with Dominic Breda clearing the ball from the line, and two minutes later, a free kick from a Formula 1 team was saved, and with that, we secured another three points. What a start to the second round. And now the question is, what if we not only secured three points against Bohemia? and Sprague, but also scored 3 goals. And not bottle it, like last season? Well, this is exactly what happened. Our plan was working flawlessly. We were on a great way to complete the first step and we were eager to go further in the series progress. What is that? What the f*** is that? Moving on, Sparta Prague next. First minute of the game and something happened. A considered goal? No. An injury eliminating Breda from the rest of the season. We'll come back to it in a minute. Sparta Prague, of course, leaders of the table, 56 points before the game. We us, 36. Second Slav Prague has 48. Yalcin Kayan gets across, but has to go outside the penalty area. And the bad news can turn into good news because the ref is potentially calling a penalty. We're waiting for VAR. We'll see. He awards a pen and who steps up. And I think this is. It's gonna be Anto Robert, but we'll see. It's Marek Fiala, who just went off the bench and started with a goal. The rivals from the capital city are having a highlight. And if you're telling me this is a penalty, as Lukas Harashnik has been brought down, the ref awards indeed a penalty. And who's going to step up for this? I don't think that's Lukas Harashnik. That's at least a center back. And he tucks it home as well. Now Mashevic with possession, Yalcin Kayan tries to win it back with a slight tackle, Arnau Kuchta. And we do finish with a 1-0 result, which is okay, considering it's still the dominant force in the league. Sparta keeps the lead, although only 6 points ahead of Slavia, who have won against Brayov Kaprno, so that is a little bit of a warning sign for them. We keep this 5th place, and I hope we'll at least keep this 5th place until the very end of the season, even if it gives no Europe. We stayed in the 5th place in the league by winning against the Brice. Marek Fela went on for another strike. But if we had a closer look, he was offside. Then Tapica got a penalty scored by Trubac, and thus we lost. But we kept the fifth. I wasn't lying. But to make matters worse, before the match against Sigma Omenitz, we had two suspended players. And also an injury. Actually, two. Actually, three. Half of the squad is out. So maybe let's focus on the good news. And that is the offer from Schalke. Obviously rejected because we're building a nation and not moving through like a journeyman. And the Jufente, with two particularly talented players. Vladimir Hambalek and Daniel Zahariash. We also have two keepers in. Lukas Czur and Michal Kozel. None of them will play against Sigma though. Which brought us an actually exciting game. Although we started by conceding from a free kick, we quickly responded with Nemanja Elic. Mati Polidar gave us the lead in the second half and Marek Fiala finished the hat-trick of left-footed shots. Prihista won the header, but this did not stop us from winning. We're not bottling it anymore. And although we barely got a draw against Partubice, we could essentially feel it at this point. Not only the championship group was almost certain to happen, but also Victoria Pilsen fell off with their form. Massively. 
And all that happened whilst we were busy welcoming our potentially number one fan, Jaramir Rubek. Do you remember how he scored an own goal last episode? This time, he gave the ball to Marek Fiera to an open net. Marek obviously scored, alongside Jonathan Robert. Although Buchta scored for Slovatsko, it was too little, too late for them to fight back. We then met Nada Bolesov, who will lose 1-0 in the cup final against Slavia Prague four days later. They also lost 1-0 against us, as Marek Fiala proved his talent yet again. This win ensured our position in the championship group, but we wanted more. The Zbrojev Cup now turned out to be our easy target. We scored four past them, with Fiala getting a double. Mati Polidar added his name to the score sheet, but the star of the day was Jaroslav Malek, who did this in his first game of the season. With this win, we joined Czechia's top 6 and guaranteed ourselves the best finish in club's history. But we are not here to decorate the group and become a training ground. We are losing only 2 points to Mlada Bolesov in 3rd, and 3rd place means guaranteed Europa Conference League qualifiers. It's finally time for the biggest chapter in SFC Opava's history. For the first time in this club's history, they can get some silverware. It's not really a trophy, but it's at least a medal. Now we had a big chance from a free kick for Slovatsko. I didn't see who was actually scoring in this one. It's Jonathan Robert is on the right side, looks for a space to cross, but passes it back to Stepanek. Yalci guy with the ball and that is one nil. We are getting into that third place right now because as far as I'm aware, Mlada Bolesav is drawing against Viktor Pilsen or even losing. They are indeed losing Mlada Bolesav, so that jumps us into third in the table. Now Buchta is going on one-on-one -on -one against Fabian de Keyser. Our Dutch keeper, the star, saves it though. Wanted to make a Krusto hollow pack into the short post. Jaroslav Malek somehow wins this ball. Yalcin Kayan scores again for a total result in the 70th minute. And this time, the only thing we have to do is to see this game out, keep the result, and basically do not let Slovatsko score. Bezdek passes to Yalcin Kajan, is he going for a hat-trick? No, he passes to Filip Blecha Rodrigo Sam. Blecha enters the penalty area, almost makes it free, Kosta Dinovic saves it. Yalcin Kajan receives the pass, passes to Nemanja Elic. Would be great if Vladimir Bezdek made an overlap. Yalcin Kajan hits the post, that could have been a hat-trick. And that is it, when it comes to our games against Slovatsko this season, we are winning 2-0 with the double from Yalcin Kajan. Victoria Pilsen have won only one game in this round against Sigma or Muniz. As Filip Leha makes a cross, Jedlicka weirdly makes a save. Emil Tischler makes a pass to Mirkovic. Makes a pass to Fiala. That was a brilliant one. If he only scored it. Blecha passes to Jankovic, passes to Robert. As Robert is going down. The potential for a penalty for SFC Opava against Victoria Pilsen. And that is penalty awarded. Now who is stepping up to this? And that is someone left with it. So I believe Filip Blecha or Maciej Polidar. These are the only choices. Filip. As he tacks it home for a 1-0 result in the 14th minute. We're having it. Marek Fiala has the ball all by himself on the right side of the pitch. Decided to shoot early. At least won the corner. And imagine if we get to the European group stage. We don't get to play on the stadium probably. Because it's basically too small to handle a European group stage game. On the right side of the pitch, Maciej Polidar cuts inside and makes a wonderful shot for a tunnel result. Victoria Pilsen are in the mud. Victoria have a highlight. And I hope I didn't jinx anything by saying they're in the mud. As Haas passes to Zanotti. The ball has been partially cleared. They hit the post this time. In his final season of his career, these are potentially his final games. These are definitely his final games. Radek Schulmeister makes a shot. Blecha. Make a long shot. No, he passes to Schulmeister, who's... Do who, no, we say he wasted it? And... Yeah. That is it. That is it. 2 nil. It's 56 points for us. Fun fact for this game. I almost lost the save today while recording this because I have this experimental save for one of my older projects and I saved it as a save of Opava. And thankfully there was a backup and we saved it. And Engray has an injury in the fourth minute. Because the, this result will determine who has the momentum out of the Prague teams into, the, into winning the entire title of being the best in Czechia. Pellegrino almost scores it, misses it massively though. First, we have the highlight, an advantage of Sparta Prague. Jonathan Robert wins the possession, though. Valnoha makes a pass to Kayan. Fiala with possession. Mirkovic on the right side. Maybe he will deliver a cross or something. 
Pass it to Tischler. Tischler almost scores it. Mokrovic on the left side. And if this, this counter ends in a goal, it doesn't. Belagir was offside. Mati Polidar pass it to Mirkovic. We have to have more attacking wing backs. Valnoha makes it 1 0. But the ref is investigating the offside. Are we going to keep this? We are. Right after this goal, we have decided to sub in a 15 year old named Daniel Zaharias who just came through our youth intake. He's getting his first chance in the first team football and he's going to make sure it doesn't go to waste. Who passes to Mokrovic and I think this goes in. The Kaiser somehow catches it very easily. A series of passes have been made. Valjankovic will now have a chance to cross it. Passes to Daniel Zaharias makes it 2-0! And he's debuted! The 15 year old! It might be offside! It isn't! He scored in his first game of his professional career! He's just been signed from a new fintech two weeks ago! And now he does this! Valiankovic gets injured, but I do not care! What a moment for this club! Although the Kaiser now loses the most ridiculous goal of time. The ball hits the pause and then hits the Kaiser at the back. How is he supposed to defend that? Sparta may have had a little bit of hope, but at the end of the day, we win. We win 2-1 result. A 15-year-old scores on his debut. We've got two injured left-backs, and we have to play Zdenek Pantok for the rest of the season. But I do not care. Rocinha advances forward on the left side. Lingle now has a chance, scores it. He's going to pass to Fabian De Kayser. Who makes the worst pass ever. Actually, Stepanek didn't even bother about taking this ball, but thankfully, Rocinha was too eager to shoot. Passes to Baez. Huh? We win position, but only for like 3 milliseconds. Rocinha makes a pass to Petkov. Petkov is going to cross it or cut inside himself. Score for 2 Score for 2 0. Yaroslav Malek steps up. <laughs> Almost scores it. Hits the post, though. As Zaharyash wins it. Brilliant interception from a 15 year old. I will keep emphasizing on that. Anton Fisun with the ball on the wing, Zaharyash almost, almost, almost should have gone for the right. Good streaks have to come to an end at times. And this is what happens, two early goals from Slavia Prague, but we still have two points of advantage over Mlada Boleslav, and a win guarantees third place. For some of these players, this will be the most important game of their lives. As Jonathan Robert makes a pass, <laughs> Not a pass, but the shot, but still. Philip Blecha with a fantastic vision. Zdenek Pantok passes to Blecha. Had a disaster of a performance last time out against Slavia Prague. Yeltsin Kayan doesn't because he didn't play there. Now he scores for a 1-0 result. And we're taking this revenge on them for the last season when they knocked us out from a playoff for that final European spot. Who advances forward on the left side. We'll probably cross it all. Will Appeal for a penalty. And I will be surprised if the referee decides to give us a chance to score from the spot. He does though. Philip Blecha steps up with a chance to make it 2-0 in 42nd minute. He does. Now we're having a pen for Mlada of this time potentially. As long as the Kaiser can finally save a penalty. We're safe. He saved it. He saved it. Everything is in our favor. Passes to Omoyanga. Passes to Besic, Hassan will make it. He had to. They have the last 30 minutes. And as we speak, really Blecha scores. As we speak. Just keep passing around. Kushe runs in behind. The Kaiser saves it. They still have an opportunity to make it tense. And they will make it tense. Vasil Kushe scores for a 3 2. But at least we avoided the heartbreak and we are finishing the best season in Opava's history. By far the best season. What a season, what an effort. And now it's time to check up how is the rest of Europe going on. Because our plans are pretty simple. We'll keep the team, we'll let go Maciej Helbrand, we'll get go Malek, Ratai, Zorfen. But my main point is not to make too many signings. I want to base this team a little bit more on academy players. Maybe a defensive midfielder will be needed, but that's pretty much it. It's time to move on to the best leagues in Europe. First off, 
Portugal, Benfica win it, our affiliate has clinched the title. Also, I've seen them going for the knockout stages of the Champions League, but we'll check that in a minute. Got a fair gap over Porto and Braga. The Dutch Eredivisie sees Feyenoord this time winning the title over PSV Eindhoven and Ajax. Paris Saint-Germain do the usual, but only two points in front of Monaco and six points ahead of Marseille. Bundesliga, Bayern do the usual. And we have to analyze that. Congrats to Köln for qualifying into Europe as well as Stuttgart. In Italy though, we've got Inter Milan winning it by eight points. Not actually eight points. They still have one more game to play. Real Madrid, with still one match they left, have already clinched the title. Barcelona finish in second. And the Premier League, well, I'm surprised it isn't finished yet. But Arsenal, finally stop Manchester City's dominance and win the title. Then in the third place, it's likely it's going to be Liverpool over Chelsea. And probably the most important. Slava Prague win it over Sparta Prague. We are in the third place. Then we've got Mlad Bolesov, who are having guaranteed conference league football. So I don't know what happens there. Viktor Pilsen then and Slavachko. So let's see. There is no European playoff because we have probably lost that fifth spot. Then now just keep Ujevic, Zapartovic and Bohemians definitely stay up. Zbrojev, Kabino, Karvina will be fighting for it. And Slavon Liberec goes down to the second tier. Big news regarding the conference league. Sparta Prague not only went out of the group stage in the fifth place, but also reached the literal semi-final after beating AK Athens in the round of 16 and Ghent in the quarterfinals. They have been thrashed 4-1 against Bayer Leverkusen, but at least salvaged a draw at home. Big ups to Sporting Braga, who have reached the Europa League final. Unfortunately, they lost to Newcastle 4-1. And when it comes to the Champions League, Real Madrid wins it over Paris Saint-Germain. And if you follow the previous episodes, you will notice that Slavia Prague made it to the league phase of Champions League as they got a win against Celtic and a draw against Manchester City. Season 4 is the time when our Build the Nation save truly starts as we are getting our European debut. However, teams like Slavia and Sparta have definitely helped us at the very beginning. And we have to step up to get Czechia to at least into the top 10. Thanks for watching this episode. Thanks for watching this third season. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be really grateful for that and I will catch you on the next one.